What is going on you guys? Welcome back to another video and to the channel. So for this video, I'm going to be installing Apple CarPlay in my BMW E90 320i with the CIC head unit and iDrive system. As you guys know, I just recently installed Apple CarPlay in my BMW F30 with the NVT iDrive system. So now I'm going to be installing the same sort of module system setup but in my BMW E90. Again, it also has Android Auto along with Apple CarPlay. So if you have an Android, this will work with Android Auto also. And as usual, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to install this integration kit to get the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The install is a bit different than the NBT iDrive system. This is a CIC system, like I said, which is just set up a little bit differently. But overall, it's still not that difficult. You just have to take out some wires, connect some wires, and that's it. It should take about 30 minutes to an hour, you know, depending. For me, it's gonna take a while since I'm filming this video for you guys. But uh, anyway, let's go ahead and jump right into it here. So here is the integration kit. As you guys can see, it looks pretty similar to the integration kit for the F30, the NVT iDrive system. The module box pretty much looks exactly the same, but the wires are a bit different. So I have the main wiring harness here that will plug into the module box. And then these two wires here are for the iDrive knob so that you can control the Apple CarPlay using your knob. Um, there are two different types of wires here. Um, you're only gonna use one of these depending on the number of pins in your iDrive connection. I think mine's gonna be this one, the four pin here. You guys can see here it's labeled 4P, iDrive 4P. Um, and that has to do with the number of pins in the connection here, you guys can see there's only four. And then this one is if you have a 10 pin, you guys can see there's spots for 10 pins. So yeah, you're only gonna use one of these when you install this, it just depends on your connection. Like I said, mine is gonna be the four pin, I think. And then this one here is to connect into the screen so that we get the Apple CarPlay visual um, through our screen coming from this module box here. And then we also have our wireless antenna along with an external mic. So yeah, uh, those are all of the parts and hardware that are needed for the install. So let's go ahead and jump right into the installation process. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is disconnect the negative battery terminal, which is that terminal right there. Just so that we don't run into any electrical issues, uh, since I'm gonna be disconnecting a bunch of wires to install the integration kit. So uh, like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and loosen this 10 millimeter here and disconnect this negative battery terminal. So here it is, I disconnected the terminal and put a little towel there so that it doesn't make contact with the battery. And then I went ahead and put a towel here to block the latch locking mechanism for the truck. Just in case this falls down by any chance and it doesn't latch and then I get locked out of my car since I need the battery to open the trunk. So yeah, just some precautionary measures there. Now we can go ahead and get started on the actual install of the integration kit inside here. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do here is remove this long trim piece here that's along the dash. Just simply use a pry tool to pry it out. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the two electrical connections that are connected to these buttons up here. There's two of them. There's one that's easy to get to, which is right here underneath in the middle. Just simply pull with your finger. It'll come out just like that. And then there's one like more inside and it's a little bit harder to get to, but you should be able to still do it if you just kind of pull on the wires. Just be careful not to damage the wiring or anything. Oh yeah, you also have to disconnect the start-stop ignition button here, the electrical connection. There we go, just like that. And now the trim piece is out. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and pry these pieces off here. So the piece that's connected with the climate controls, you might be able to pull it off with your hand here. There we go. Comes off just like that. Go ahead and disconnect the electrical connections here. There 
There we go. Got that piece out. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and pry the bottom piece out that's actually covering the head unit. There we go, just like that. So now we can see the head unit, which is this piece right here, this silver piece. And it is held in by four screws. Not torque screws, but actual like regular screws. So you're gonna need a screwdriver to remove them, which is what I have here. Now before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the gear shift knob so that it creates more room for me to pull out the head unit. So you should just be able to pull up on the gear shift knob and it should come off. So let's go ahead and try this here. There we go, just like that. It takes a little bit of force, but it'll come out eventually. So I'll go ahead and put that off to the side. So actually now that I'm kind of looking at it, I'm gonna need to remove this whole trim piece here to get to the iDrive controller connection. So since I already removed the gear shift knob, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this piece here as well. There we go. Next I'll remove the panel trim piece here. So you can just pull up on it and it should just come out like that. And then there are a couple electrical connections, so go ahead and disconnect those. There's one, there's a white one over here. There we go, got that one out. I had to use a little pick tool here to kind of pry it out. But anyway, got it out, so I'll move that off to the side. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and try and pry out this entire trim piece here. See now the iDrive electrical connection here, there's just one connection. So now I'll go ahead and begin removing the head unit here by removing the four screws that I mentioned. the scrolls in the background that I keep on chirping. Seems like there's always some bird or thing that has to interrupt my videos with a bunch of obnoxious noise in the background. But anyway, I got the four screws out, so let's go ahead and try and remove this head unit here. There we go. Go ahead and flip it this way. Since we need this cable right here, this pink one. It's the only cord we're gonna need from the head unit here. All right, so here I have the main module box. And then here I have the main cord or wire harness. This was like the largest wire harness that comes with the kit. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this gray connection piece into the box through here, like that. And then this connector here, that's a part of the same large wire harness, is gonna connect into this wire harness here that connects into the iDrive controller here. So let's go ahead and do that. Go ahead and undo this. So to set this up properly, we're gonna disconnect the connection that goes from the car to the iDrive. So we're gonna remove that connection. There we go, just like that. Now we're gonna put this same connection that came, or that was connected into the iDrive, into the new harness here. 
that we just connected to the module box. There's two ends here. So this one that came from directly from the iDrive controller goes into this female socket here. Like that, and then this other part of the wire is gonna connect into the iDrive controller. So let's go ahead and do that. There we go. So now I'm gonna take the last cable here that's labeled LVDS out and LVDS in. And we're going to connect those to the module box and to the head unit here and also to the screen so that we can get a visual on the screen of the Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. So this white part of the cable connects directly into the module box which is also which also has a white connection point here so let's go ahead and do that. And then now I'm going to remove this pink connection wire here that connects directly from the screen to the head unit. Go ahead and remove this. And then we're going to connect it into the LVDSN wire here. It's labeled on this piece of paper here. Go ahead and connect those. And then Take the LVDS out and connect it into the head unit here in this same connection point that the uh, pink wire that goes from the screen to the head unit was in. So let's put this here. There we go. Next I'm going to go ahead and plug in the wireless antenna here. This goes into the back of the module box where this red cover is. And then I'm going to go ahead and just plug in the external mic. So plug this into the port on the module box that says MIC or mic. Plug it in there. All right, so that is all of the wiring connections that you need to make. So everything should be connected. So let's go ahead and test out this system here to make sure everything works before I put everything back together. All right, so I went ahead and reconnected the battery. So let's go ahead and test this out here. So now I'm going to go ahead and press the menu button on the iDrive controller here. Hold it down for two seconds. There we go. That is the CarPlay interface, the main menu for the module. So for this video, I actually am doing this for the very first time. I have not connected my phone to this uh, module box yet. In my other video where I installed it for the NBT iDrive system and my F30, I actually connected my phone beforehand and tested everything out before I did the video. But for this video, everything I'm doing is for the very first time, so um, that is why the like our Apple CarPlay like menu didn't show up initially. As soon as I switched from the uh, original factory iDrive system to the module box, uh, nothing came up, just the main menu. So I still need to connect my phone via Wi-Fi to the CarPlay. So I am going to do that, but first I do want to try one thing with the USB port. Where is it at? Here. So yeah, a USB port does come like already connected with the main wiring harness. So I do want to try this. I'm not sure if it's just like a charging port or it actually can activate CarPlay just by connecting like wired to your phone. So I'm gonna go ahead and try that real quick here. So I do have my phone connected into the USB port there. And you guys can see CarPlay did activate automatically, which is exactly what I wanted to see if it will connect to CarPlay without, you know, the Wi-Fi connection. I thought maybe like it only connects to CarPlay via the Wi-Fi and this was just a charging port but as you guys can see it's also a way to connect to the CarPlay without the Wi-Fi which is important for me because I have a dash cam up here as you guys can see. It also connects via the Wi-Fi and if I connect to CarPlay via Wi-Fi through my phone 
it will not let me connect to my dash cam to record video and uh, automatically save the videos to my phone. So uh, for me, the USB port is a way I wanted to be able to connect my, like connect to the CarPlay and also be able to connect to my dash cam without having any issues. So that's why I wanted to try this. So this is very important for me since I have a dash cam and to any of you else watching this video that have a wireless dash cam that connects to your phone. So you can still get the CarPlay if you connect directly to the USB port instead of doing the wireless CarPlay. Oh, and my uh, car shut down here probably because it's been on for a while. So I'm just gonna turn that back on. So yeah, uh, I just wanted to make note of that for those of you who may be interested in that feature. You do not have to connect it via Wi-Fi. You can connect it through the USB port here that comes with the harness. But I am gonna have to find a way to like have this exposed so that I can connect to it when I put everything back together here, but I'll figure that out later. But for now, let's see this car play. So the knob is working, so that's great. Let's go to the main menu here. There we go. Let's see all of the apps. So the important thing is here, I wanna make sure the audio works. So I'm gonna go ahead and play. I'll probably just play like another YouTube video since I don't wanna get like a copyright claim for playing like some music in the background from Spotify. I guess I'll just play one of my own videos that I've already posted. I'll go ahead and play one of my older videos here. Let's play this one. All right, so I wasn't having audio for a second there, but I quickly realized I needed to have the the aux cable that's connected to the module box here. I need to have it connected into the aux port that's in the armrest here. So if you're not getting any sound, make sure you have this connected and then you will have sound. So let's go ahead and try this again. Play the video. There's and there you guys can hear my voice from my other video. I honestly don't know how that thing has so yeah, function. Uh, like... The sound is now working for all the speakers. And I did play a song to make sure it works also. All right, so now that I know that the audio is working, let's go ahead and check the microphone to make sure I can send text messages and answer phone calls and whatnot. So let's go to messages. Go to my wife. What do you want to say to pretty young girl? Hi. It says, hi, do you want to send it or change it? Okay, so now we know that works. And I'm assuming the phone app works too if I wanted to make a phone call. So, so yeah, I think everything is working properly. So yeah, now I have to reinstall everything, which I feel like is gonna be a little annoying and complicated to route all the wiring and stuff so um i'm gonna go ahead and try to put this all together i'm probably not gonna talk to you guys while i'm doing this so that i can figure out how to put it all together but i will film myself uh putting it all together so put you guys on a tripod so that you guys can watch and i'll fast forward it obviously so you don't have to sit there that long Alright, so I think I figured out a spot to put the module box and I wanted to show you guys because when I was first trying to like put the or find a spot to put the box back here, I could not find any spot like there was no room whatsoever. I was going to be afraid that I wasn't going to be able to uh, run this um, module box because it's just too big. At first I thought I could put it right here, like just slide in here, but this piece like underneath back here gets in the way so it doesn't fit like if this was more like upward not blocking like this opening it could fit in there but since it's like kind of slanted downward it just it will not go in there so i was like damn uh, i cannot find a spot so eventually i noticed that there were more screws along here there was one there and then one back here like back around this piece here on both sides. So I thought, oh, maybe this whole piece can come out like this. And so I removed those four screws and the top part started moving, but there was still another part that was secured. And then I noticed there were two more screws holding down this metal bracket here. So there's one that goes there 
one that goes right there. Those look like these. They're an eight millimeter bolt. So I removed those and then I was able to get this whole piece to come out. I'll show you guys like this. Um, if you lift up this metal piece here, it can come out. But yeah, you guys can see, oh there we go, I got it. So this whole like metal frame where the head unit sits in can come out if you remove those four screws and then those two bolts down here. And then this frees up some space to put the box back behind here, which is exactly where it's at. There's enough space there to stuff it back there. So the box is back there right now. I don't want to take it out so I don't have to like redo everything I just did. But there will be space there once you get this frame out. And it opens up a huge opening right here. So, um, yeah, that's where I put it. And then when you like find a spot for it, just basically put this back in place here. I get the wiring out of the way. And then there we go, just like that. And then now it's back in the same position it was in. So yeah, that is the best spot to put the module box on this like head unit here for the E93 series with the iDrive system. So yeah, that is what you're gonna wanna do to uh, find a spot to put the module box. So I wanted to show you guys that. Also, I was thinking about how I'm going to hide the wiring for the aux port here. So there is an opening right here where this like locks in place. And I ran it through there, so I think that's gonna work. But let me go ahead and close this and see if it closes now that that's there. Okay, so it still locks in place even though that wire's there. So that works out perfectly. So you can run this wire and then you can run it underneath the trim piece here so that you don't see any of the wiring. And then you can connect it into the aux port there to get the audio like that. And then it works out perfectly. That closes. All right, so one last thing I wanted to show you guys that I did here. So for this cable here that's connected to the iDrive, to get it back inside here, without like it getting in the way when you reinstall everything. I just ran it through this little opening right here in the corner and then it comes out on the other side as you can see it moving right there and then you can connect it to the connection here which I still need to do. And then also for the USB cable I ran it through the same opening right here which was a bit of a struggle here since this is kind of fat and I had to fit it through this little thing but I just simply pried this open and I squeezed it through, it was kind of a tight squeeze, but I got it. And now I have an easy access to the USB port here without it getting in the way when I reinstall everything. So yeah, that is what I wanted to show you guys for those of you who may be wondering how to route the wiring and everything. I also ran the aux cord through this same opening along with the wire to the iDrive controller and the USB port. So again, this is like the best spot to run this wiring underneath the trim piece so that it's not showing or, or getting in the way or anything when you reassemble everything. So, all right, I think that's it. So now let's finally put all of this stuff back together. Alright guys, so I have everything reinstalled and put back together. So let's go ahead and activate this CarPlay again. Turn on the car here. Hit the menu button for two seconds. There we go. So since I showed you guys already how it works with the USB port here that I left exposed, if you want a direct connection and not a wireless connection, now, if you want a wireless connection or Bluetooth connection where it connects to your phone automatically via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, you're going to have to go to your phone, to your settings in iPhone, or if you have an Android settings, go to Bluetooth. should be an option that pops up at the bottom called Lime Set Box. I believe that's how you say it. So you're going to click that, and then it's going to ask you to pair, 
and then you can sync your context if you want. I'll go ahead and allow, and then it'll connect, and then it'll automatically start syncing all of your phone data into the module box, and it will appear on the screen here on your iDrive, and there we have it. And everything is here, just like it was with the USB connection. So yeah guys, this is pretty awesome. Like I said, it, when I installed it in my F30, I absolutely love how this works and how integrated it is with uh, your iDrive control knob and just your car in general. It feels like the car came from factory with this system. You know, since there's no extra wiring or anything exposed, everything's all hidden away, tucked away and how it utilizes your the factory connection points in the whole iDrive and head unit system. And then also you can always switch back to your factory iDrive system by holding down the menu button again for two seconds. So hold it down and then it'll go back to your factory system. And then if you need to check like stuff with the vehicle or anything, you can always come back. So yeah, that's a pretty awesome feature with this integration kit. So I'm gonna go back here you can open up your maps if you want. And then if you have Apple Music or Spotify, I have Spotify, so I have my Spotify account on here. So yeah guys, this is pretty awesome. But like I said, since I have a dash cam, I'm probably not gonna use the wireless feature. I'm just gonna use the direct connection with the USB port there. And any of you who have a dash cam that connects to your phone wirelessly to download like dash cam footage or anything, you're gonna wanna use the USB port since with the with the wireless connection with this uh, integration kit, it won't let you connect to your dash cam, which is kind of an, uh, like a little inconvenience, but it's not that big of a deal. Oh, the car just turned off here. Turn it back on. So I'm going to show you guys here how or why it won't connect to the dash cam. So my dash cam just turned on here and it usually auto joins to like start the drive on my phone. But since the CarPlay is connected, it won't let any other Wi-Fi networks connect to your phone. So let's say I want to do this. It's going to say to disconnect the Apple CarPlay or the Lime Set box if I want to join. Um, the dash cam Wi-Fi and if I do that it will disconnect from the CarPlay so yeah that's one little annoying thing and then it connects automatically so but if you don't have a dash cam you can utilize this Wi-Fi feature without issue or anything so yeah that's one thing I wanted to note for those of you who have a dash cam like me okay so one last thing here um, about the microphone that came with the kit that I said you may not need so I think you will need the microphone, the external microphone that comes with the kit. And I end up putting it like right behind here, this air vent, like right in this space behind here. And it's been working fine. It can hear me. So um, if you need a spot to put it right behind the vent here, we'll do just that. So yeah, you will have to use the microphone to you know be able to use the text message and answer phone calls and for them to hear you, you are gonna have to use the microphone and connect it to the box. So yeah, uh, I think that is everything um, with this kit. As usual, if you guys have any questions, comment them down below and I will answer them there. All right, you guys, so that completes the installation and the overview of this CarPlay slash Android Auto integration kit for your BMW E90, E92, 3 Series or any BMW with the CIC iDrive system. Again, this does work with Android Auto also, not just CarPlay, but since I have an iPhone, I can only show you what the CarPlay looks like. But it does work with Android for those of you who have an Android phone. So yeah, guys, again, I think this is a pretty awesome, pretty cool, pretty convenient integration kit for CarPlay and Android Auto. It kind of modernizes these older E9X 3 Series BMWs with the iDrive. Since a lot of the new BMWs come with Apple CarPlay or Android Auto from factory, you can now get an integration kit like this to add it to the older model BMWs and still retain all of the factory functions and everything and not have to do any extra wiring or coding or anything. You just simply hook up everything and then 
it'll work as soon as it's connected. And like with the integration kit for the NBT system, this kit for the CIC iDrive system will be available on inline6auto.com if not already available. So check down in the description of this video for a link to inline6auto.com where you can purchase this integration kit for your BMW E9X 3 Series or any BMW with the CIC iDrive system. Now to know if you have the CIC iDrive system, it's the, if you if your iDrive screen and like your whole system setup looks like how mine did, my factory iDrive system, then you have the CIC iDrive system. I believe the earlier E9X 3 Series models came with the CCC iDrive system, which looks slightly different. Uh, but this kit does not work with that iDrive system. However, there will be an integration kit available for that system as well. Again, that system is for the CCC iDrive system. The one I showed you guys in this video is for the CIC system. So just make sure to take note of which iDrive system you have from factory. Just look at how your system is set up and how it looks and compare it. Uh, to the pictures that will be available on the website inline6auto.com. It'll show you guys which system the integration kit will work with. But as far as I'm aware, the CCC iDrive system was for pre-LCI E9X 3 Series models, and then the CIC iDrive system, which is what I have, is for the LCI E9X 3 Series models. And it is a bit confusing, but just make sure you do your research beforehand before you purchase it to make sure you get the right correct integration kit that will work with your factory iDrive system. So yeah guys, I believe that is everything. If there are any questions on things I did not address in this video since because there is quite a bit to address and I probably missed a few things. So if you have any questions that I didn't answer, you can always, like I said, comment down below this video and I'll answer your questions there. So yeah guys, I think that is going to do it for this video. As usual, thank you guys for watching as always. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And feel free to check out inline6auto.com for any aftermarket accessories for your E9X 3 Series. I will leave a link to it in the description of this video as well. And if, for those of you who have purchased anything or plan to purchase anything from inline6auto.com, I just want to say thank you for the support. It means everything. But uh, anyway, I will see you guys in the next video.